So speaking of ham-fisted, feminist-focused superhero characters, let's talk about Captain Marvel again, because that seems to be a popular topic when we talk about it. Yeah. So the movie comes out today as this airs. Well, actually, on the Thursday night that we're recording, it has, you know, the early screenings and whatnot. Hell yeah. But I think what is there to discuss at the present moment is some critic reviews, because obviously they're saying this is the big woman empowerment movie it's the big feminist icon for marvel they've been gunning for that whole diversity angle for a while now in the comics which didn't sell and now they're putting it in the movie and they want you to see it because this is going to be the one to beat thanos kevin feige said thanos so uh let's look at some review scores here so rotten tomatoes right now from critics is at an 82 percent approval rating meaning 82 percent of them didn't give it a low enough score for it to be like, you know, I guess rotten or whatever it's called. So 82% say, yeah, it's okay, you watch it. But on Metacritic, which doesn't work on an approval rating, it goes on an average score basis from critics, is at a 65. Which implies that while critics may be recommending it or saying that it's good enough to watch, they're not that crazy about it. 65 is not that great. That's a little above average. Now, for comparison's sake, let's look at Alita Battle Angel. On Rotten Tomatoes, that has a 59% from critics, 94% for audience. Critics don't really like that, they disrecommend it. Audiences love it, which we've talked about pr previously. On Metacritic, 54 average for critics, 8.7 for audience. So, indicates a little consistency there with Rotten Tomatoes. Now, let's look at Star Wars The Last Jedi where a ton of people hated this fucking movie. 91% approval for critics, 44% for audience score. And on Metacritic, 85 average score for critics and only 4.4 for user score. So, what does this tell us? Like I said, while the majority of critics, and we don't have an audience score yet for Captain Marvel, that'll be a whole nother thing, if, if the uh, want-to-see rating is any indication, it won't be good. It could be another Last Jedi thing. But yeah, what we're seeing is, while critics are recommending Captain Marvel, they're not that enthusiastic about it. Whereas with The Last Jedi, even though a lot of people hated it, critics really liked it. And with Alita, it's, it's like the opposite. So, well, what's Marvel's strategy going to be? If this movie is an audience bomb and they really want you to like this movie because this is going to be their Thanos-defeating character, what are they going to do when Endgame comes out? What's going to be their plan? I don't know. Aren't they supposed to be revealing another villain? I have, I have no idea. What... Did, did you see the Lego sets? I did not. There are supposedly Lego sets that were even leaked that uh, reveal, like, the compound battle that has, like, uh, Captain America, Hulk, and Captain Marvel fighting Thanos and Outrider? Who? Someone called Outrider, who looks pretty much like the Iron Spider from the comics, but with all black. And then they have another set that has two Outriders with uh, Thanos, so I guess maybe he found new, like, Shatari? I don't know. I'm just going to call it goons. <laughs> goons to face, or mini-bosses, maybe. But, so, yeah, we're pretty sure he won't have the Infinity Gauntlet anymore, because that looked pretty wrecked at the end of Infinity War, so... Uh, I don't know. What is he going to do? How is he going to fight them? Well, they're going to go back in time and get, the other, get it before he uses it. How are they going to go back in time without the time stone? Quantum realm. Okay. Is, uh, explain this. Explain for the uninitiated. Dude, dude, I don't know. The whole theory is that they're going to go with Ant-Man to the quantum realm, and they're going to be able to travel back in time. All right. Well, whatever. It's, a, it's as good an explanation but of as any. They also said that the quantum realm is going to play an important part in Captain Marvel, but it did not come up once. Hmm. Now, I know you say you don't want to give a big review, but you did see the movie. I did. So, all of the things that we've talked about it thus far, all the power comparisons and the controversy and the marketing, all of that aside, what did you think of it just in terms of uh, quality and story and actors? Just good, bad, shit, watch, don't watch. I'd say for the three-fourths of the movie that I enjoyed, watch it. However, 
you know, based on just what they've said about Captain Marvel, about her being the strongest, there is going to be a giant fucking ass pull. And that's what it is. That's why I gave the movie a 7.5 out of 10, because the last fucking quarter of the movie pissed me off. I feel like you're being pretty generous with the rating. Brie Larson did a great job, like, as a charis- as like, charismatic, Oh my god, charismatic. Charismatic. Charismatic character. And uh, I liked her. Like, throughout the movie, I liked Brie Larson when she was just being her. But then, aha, I'm God. And I just completely lost it. I just started telling people in the theater, I was like, I hate this movie, I hate this movie, I hate this movie. (laughs) Well, I would go on the philosophy, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So if it didn't finish well, I don't know. But how accurate do you think the trailers were? How accurate of a picture did the trailers portray of the movie? Uh, trailers don't do it justice, I don't think. The trailers played up to be like, uh, I really didn't want to see the movie based off the trailers, but after watching the movie, the trailers were kind of misleading. They, like, lead it on immediately that she's going to be this, like, most powerful character, and she's not. Not in the beginning. Not in the beginning. No. But then she is. Yeah. Later on. Fucking asshole. <laughs> Now, you said you didn't want to see it at first, but then you did anyway. Why? Uh, MCU. Right. Brand loyalty. Now, here's something I wanted to get into. Brand loyalty is a thing that's been going on forever. And I don't know if it's like a, I don't know, a human in-group, out-group thing, or like you invest yourself in a brand and you feel like you have to go see it through, but I don't really feel this. And this isn't just, it's not just Captain Marvel that I'm singling out that I'm not going to see because bah, women are bad. No, it's, it's not that. I, I didn't even see Black Panther. Oh my god, he's a racist too. No, wait, let me finish. I didn't see the new Ant-Man. I didn't see the first Ant-Man in theaters. I didn't see the latest Spider-Man either. Did I see Doctor Strange? I think I did. Just because the visuals looked kind of interesting. But my point is, is that I just don't see a movie if I'm not interested in it. Like, I... At first, maybe, I, yeah, I would have seen all the Marvel movies, especially, like, when Guardians of the Galaxy first came out. I was like, what the hell is this? These characters look goofy. Although, actually, I think the trailer did attract me to seeing it, so I can't say that the trailers were put me off to it, and then I saw it anyway. No, the trailers were good, but I didn't know the characters, so I didn't have any investment on them beyond just watching the trailer. But it worked out. I liked Guardians of the Galaxy, and I still do. I like the sequel. But I don't feel like I have to see... Every Marvel movie, every DC movie, every DC show. And I feel like sometimes people uh, kind of grip on to these brands too heavily and they defend it when something comes out and it's controversial. They feel the need that they have to come at it from an angle or attack it too harshly because they feel possessive of the characters. And if it strays, then, you know, they really come down hard on the companies. But I feel like at this point, I'm just like, eh, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, well, move on to something else. There's so many other things that you can direct your attention at that, I don't know, I find it increasingly laborious to get angry at these sort of movies and properties, because it's very easy, I think, for people who are interested in a certain creative aspect or uh, agenda or message that they want to get through to co-opt the production of something like this. Like, Like with Star Trek Discovery, there was... As I said before, all controversy about that, and then Star Wars, and now Marvel, and then the comics, and then the movies, and then the television, like Supergirl. There's always going to be some shit that somebody's trying to pull that somebody's not going to like. And I feel like you just have to, at some point, filter it out, or you're going to drive yourself insane. I, I don't know. How do, you, how do you feel? Am I too long-winded here, or like, does this make sense? No, it makes sense. Because, you know, not, not that I'm even criticizing you for seeing it, because I know that, you know. That's just what... Oh, oh, you're not going to criticize me. What did you write? Hold on, let's see. What did you write to me? <laughs> yeah, I did send him a, a keen message on Facebook. Why are you wasting money on that trash? Why are you watching this trash? It's because I posted all the our videos on your comment, damn it, and you watched it anyway. <laughs> I warned you. It was going to piss you off. It was the deviation from the comics that really pissed me off. Yeah, yeah, well, I know you do know the comics, you know, even a lot better than I do, so... That's that's the angle that you'll come at it with. Me, I, I'm at this point, I'm just, is it a good movie? Was it a good adaptation? Did they use the properties well? And, yeah. I just don't like when they take something like this and they use it to uh, broadly convey a haphazardly constructed message. Which, I don't know, did you get the sense that it was doing 
doing something like that? Like it was really gunning for the whole women empowerment? No, actually. Yeah. And I, I had a feeling like that would just be mainly a marketing thing. I mean, a bunch of people, or there were a bunch of posts and articles that did kind of play it up a lot. So, and again, I guess it's when it comes down to marketing, that is ultimately what will make me see a movie or not. Because if, if I can base it on all of the images and information that you're using to preview it, then what am I going to base my want to see on it? And I guess that's why the want to see rating went all the way down. It's because people don't want to have this kind of stuff shoved in their face and saying, this is the morally correct thing. And if you don't agree with it, then you're just wrong. So if you don't like this movie, <laughs> you're wrong. Like, maybe that's not exactly what they say, but that's the feeling that I get and I think a lot of people get. Yeah, it was... Outside of the movie, it's... Uh, Brie Larson claims she didn't say what everyone says she did. And everyone's, like, angry about the movie because they think Brie Larson said that straight white males shouldn't see it. But other people are like, no, all she said is that she'd like more diversity in her audience. And honestly, the movie itself doesn't really call for my more diversity. The movie tells a straightforward plot story, and it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't really make it a feminist issue or a race issue. There's none of that. Not been, none of them are like relevant themes. Yeah, well, I did see her quote, and specifically, I'm pretty sure she was referring to the kind of people who interviews her yeah. at all the different press junkets. Like she's saying that there's too many white press members who are male. Yeah, so. And again, with the what we were talking about last week about Wonder Woman being directed by a woman, I could almost, I can kind of see a little bit her point of view where she's saying that a writer's voice or an artist's voice is sometimes dependent on their background. And I get that. So she's saying, I want to be interviewed by more different people so that their perspective based on their background can have a say in all of this different discourse about the movie. But the way she came at it, was just wrong. And and she tried to, like, you know, back it up as she was saying it. And she's like, no, this doesn't mean I hate white guys. Yeah, but you're kind of making it sound like that. And it's going to rub people the wrong way. And that's a big mistake on when, when you have a movie or anything that has this much writing on it. Like, this is going to be the big, this is the lead-in to the big conclusion of all of their 10 or 11 years worth of work. So, yeah. I don't know. It is what it is. It will be what it will be.